Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're watching Ted Lasso. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're watching more of season two of Ted Lasso. I never thought I'd say these words, uh, but I'm happy that Jamie Tart is back. I've come a long way in such a short period of time. Um, it's not hard to love Jamie when he is vulnerable and he's open and he's not being that personality that I think he thinks a football player should be that kind of I think his father has instilled in him to be like, you know, this this big bad or like, you know, better than everyone, act like it, behave like it, live like it, and you will be like it. And uh, unfortunately, it's isolated him uh, so much that Man City didn't want him back, um, but he wasn't welcomed back onto our team with open arms. They were very resistant to him because they finally got this team camaraderie. And then, you know, Jamie's back. And if anything, you know, they can just all hate him. I love that him and Sam had a moment where, you know, they both decide to put the tape over Dubai Air and that they're in full support of Sam's decision to not uh, have a contract with Dubai Air. Um, I, I, I love that Jamie is back with the team, but also I love that he's around men that like support him. And I think like the more he realizes he doesn't need to be this toxic person that, you know, he can believe in other people and they'll believe in him and that he can work together uh, as a team and also have Ted and, and Coach Beard and, and maybe uh, even Higgins, maybe Roy Kent, you know, all of these other males that are in his life that can show him support and, and appreciation and love um, that his father isn't showing him. And I think that that might kind of make him go a little bit away from his father and more towards these healthy relationships. I don't think that like the uh, the seeking his father's approval is going to stop. Um, but uh, I, I hope he realizes that there are relationships that he can have with other men that are healthy and are not toxic and always win, win, win at all cost. And you have to score the big goal and you're the one that has to, you know, make the difference for the team and, and, and all these things. Like, I don't think that you have to be a star in order to be important or special. Now, Roy is a pundit on TV and uh, where I didn't think that he would do a, a fantastic job because of his dirty mouth. Uh, that's actually what makes him great. <laughs> so I'm all for it. They just need to get like a little like button for people to beep, 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 beep <laughs> to cover the fruity language, as they say. Uh, I don't think it's fruity. I think it's spicy. <laughs> I'm really, really, really loving Roy. Um, the, the more that he is... I, I, I now get his personality. So like when he's grumpy Roy or he's angry Roy, I'm like, yeah, that's a superpower right there. I love that about him. Um, but like seeing him and Keeley's relationship progress and, and how thoughtful he is, especially like he's kind of mean to Phoebe, but like, like she knows that it's all in the name of love. And like, that's just his personality. And like, um, the fact that he isn't mean to Keely, but like, you know, he he definitely shows his vulnerability and how sweet he is, especially with the the women in the yoga group and him like drinking wine with them, having like a rosé night. Like, I would love to have a rosé night with Roy Kent. And if I'm inviting you over for rosé, like you're my bestie. So I'm I'm really, really loving Roy. I've come a long way because I really didn't know whether or not I was going to like him in the first season. Um, the first episode, I thought I was going to hate Keely, and she's one of my favorite characters. I thought Ted's like optimism and, and happiness, I was like, this is going to get wearing, and it's not constant. It really isn't, especially when he has lead tasso that he can break out and cause confusion. I really did love that moment because like, it, it totally reminded me of Herb Brooks, even though I couldn't think of Herb Brooks's name in that moment. Um, but I, I absolutely love the movie Miracle. It makes me cry every time I watch it, but I love the lessons that Herb Brooks was teaching in that movie. I don't know how much of that's true, but I feel like, I feel like a lot of it is. And I love that he had that whole tactic of like, if they all hate me, then they have no time to hate Jamie. I love it. I love it. I love it so much. Uh, Rebecca kind of putting herself out there dating wise and, and Roy just kind of being like, you know, I'm going to paraphrase, but uh, not even paraphrase. I'm going to say what I think he meant is like, if someone doesn't think the sun shines out your ass, why bother? And, and he's 100 percent right. And I, I love those lessons that we get from Roy and the colorful language in which we learn it from him. He's great. 
He's great. And I want Rebecca to be happy. I want her to uh, find her person. But I, I love that she kind of has this relationship now with her her goddaughter that uh, she she kind of bailed on her six years ago and now she's making up for it. And I thought it was fantastic, their little day in the office and really was able to see what, what her goddaughter could do. It was fantastic. I love the, the relationship now Rebecca has with Higgins. I think it's a lot healthier, um, especially for Higgins, although he he needs an office and he gave it up for the psychologist, um, which I think is phenomenal for this season because a lot of times when we're in shows like this, we kind of ignore the traumas that people have gone through and how they haven't worked through a lot of those issues. Um, your trauma makes you stronger. It really does because it gives you a sense of fight. Um, but there are some things that people try to bury deep and they don't deal with it. And I think Ted and Rebecca are definitely those two people. And I, I, I would love if we got a moment with the psychologist and, and Rebecca and also one with Ted. Did I say Roy? I meant Ted. I mean, Roy would probably help too, quite frankly. And, you know, we saw Keely walk Jamie in there at the end and Jamie was the one that like, he needs it more than anything. Like I, I hope, I mean, we don't necessarily need to see the sessions with a psychologist with, with Jamie, but I would love to, I would love, I would love to have a psychologist break down Jamie, but I love that we're exploring more of the characters. We got more from Sam. I'd love more from Isaac, Colin, Bumbercatch. Cause like, finally I got a face to go with a name. Cause I love that it's Cumberbatch, but Bumbercatch. Um, but <laughs> Like we're learning more about the other players and really excited about that. But um, I'd really like to uh, like have Nate sit in with the psychologist and figure out why he's so mean to Will. Maybe it's high expectations. Maybe it's because he was bullied before. Maybe he's frustrated that, you know, somebody's doing something that he used to do, but differently. Um, and because I know that I get like set in my ways. And then when somebody does something that I'm 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 like, that's not the way I do it. Like I have to like go, you know what? People are allowed to do things the way that they think is right, and maybe their way is better. So maybe lavender in the towels is a good idea, unless you're Roy. That guy does not need to calm down, but he hasn't been playing, so he should be a coach for the team or a coach for another soccer team. Anyway, <laughs> I'm excited to watch more episodes of the show. It is quickly becoming like my favorite thing to watch. I get so excited. I have watched more of these episodes and burned through them quicker than any other show that I have ever watched. Like I literally cannot wait to sit down and watch these. Uh, so guys, let's get into it. Oh, and I'm wearing my um, Irish, I was a little bit taller shirt today because it's true. <laughs> Irish, I was a little bit taller, uh, but I would also say that then I would be um, funny medium gal. Who wants to be medium? Not me. Scarf. Cool. What's wrong with Did you make this? Yeah, man. Knitting soothes me. He made it? So, I didn't know everyone was doing booze. Oh. Mommy. Cheers. This is great. <laughs> I like his hat. Oh. Nate, is this a photo of you and me after our first win? Yeah. Aww. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Look at that. Oh, what a I love Nate. That you wrote completely over my head, face, and body. <laughs> to responsibility. Being responsible. Just, just, just drink it down. And we got this Boxing Day win. We'll finally have more wins than losses. Yay. Uh, Jane and I are going to a pagan Christmas ritual at Stonehenge. Nice. What? Before you two broke up? We did, but we got the tickets before we broke up, so we're going as friends. That doesn't oh, work. That's going to be... Uh... Awkward. What about you, Keely? What are you going to do? Roy and I are celebrating a new tradition that I'm calling Sexy Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be a swinging, oh. swinging Sinatra. Sit by the fire. Oh, fun. And then it's going to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to a Christmas party at a friend's house. What friend is that? First and last name, please. Oh. Elton John. Oh. oh, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> Hold me closer, tiny dancer, prancer, and vixen. <laughs> yes. Hopefully Rachel Weiss and Daniel Craig will do their puppet show again. I want to see that. Did you not buy a Secret Santa gift? I didn't know I had to. The email oh said God. Secret Santa. 
didn't want to ruin the surprise, did I? Oh, Jamie. <laughs> here. Yep, yeah, there you go. Higgins, look alive. Huh. Oh, look at them. Ooh, there's your Christmas miracle. God bless me. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Same old Jamie. <laughs> Different but same. Look at a Christmas beginning. Oh, I love it. Even though it's animation and not clay animation, it looks like clay animation. Hey guys, as it turns out, it is stop animation. Uh, I, I wanted to check that out. And then I realized that there is an animated short that they did as well with the same characters and everybody voices them. So uh, at the end of these episodes and at the end of my commentary, There'll be a little treat waiting for you guys. So remember, watch till the end. It looks like clay animation. Oh, Nate and Keely, you're so cute. I want a little Coach Beard, like, like, like Funko Pop guy with his little legs crossed, sunglasses, Santa hat. Oh, God. I dated somebody from Cleveland and they always talk about that house in Cleveland with the damn leg lamp. So cute! Oh. I need to go do some sit-ups and eat some lettuce. Merry Christmas! It's not Roy. Mm. Hey, well. Sexiest of all the days. Yeah. Ooh. Holy fucking shit, you look incredible. She does look incredible. <laughs> Seriously, I need to, to lift some weights or something. Oh, Cindy Clawford. Merry Christmas and welcome to our home. Oh, hello. Hey, Sam. Sorry, I know I'm early, but I was in the neighborhood. Oh, no, 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 no. Sam, come in, come in. Thank you. <laughs> I love the Higginses so much. Back home in Lagos, we have good friends who celebrate and they always eat jollof rice and goat meat. So I made you some. Oh. Mm. But I use chicken. Oh, thank God. Thank God. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is this a tiny dartboard or did I become a giant? It's a oh. mini dartboard. Oh. Do you like it? No, I don't like it. I love it. Thank you. I love Ted. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Ted. Anna, careful. The baseboards. Oh. <laughs> I want to drink spiked eggnog with Ted Lasso on Christmas. Problems, they're like mushrooms, yeah? The longer you leave them in the dark, the bigger they get. Oh. A play at school was mean to me. What did he do? Oh, yeah, Roy, simmer down now. Merry Christmas, Phoebe. I got you something you desperately need. Uh oh. Secret Santa Bernard. Right, where does Bernard live? Oh, Roy. Roy. No, I'm not going to go beat up little kids. Yeah, no beating up little kids. But your breath doesn't smell that bad. Come on. Oh, I bet it's Maybe bad. it's me. <sighs> uh, oh. Oh, oh, wow. I'm so sorry, I really tried. Maybe there's a bad tooth in there. I've spent the last 20 years in locker rooms with men. I promise you I've smelled worse. Oh, I no, that know. means he hasn't. Come on. <laughs> I think you might be dying. <laughs> There's a bad tooth in there. Or she's got food in her tonsils. Hey, I brought fried chicken. Ah, nice. Is that a Christmas tradition in Holland? No. no. Oh. No! <laughs> <laughs> I'd eat fried chicken on Christmas. That sounds awesome. Oh, Ted. I think that's It's a Wonderful Life, and I still have not watched that movie. Always reminds me of that movie, Once. You ever see that? Oh, great film. Yeah, I love Once so much, I saw it twice. <laughs> Such a Ted Lasso joke. Whoa, Rebecca, you baller. Oh, shit. <laughs> I guess that's what I get for taking a tinkle next to John Holmes. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it took a hot second for that joke to sink in. It's a Christmas miracle. Oh, it's like a... 
Merry Christmas. Right back at you, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Did you just call you a wanker? Yeah, it's an inside joke. Mostly with inside the whole you. town. <laughs> Mostly inside of him. <laughs> this isn't embarrassing. Embarrassing is me in so much ice cream, knowing I'm no good with dairy, that I pooped my pants on the bus. It's pretty bad, yeah. When is your story? Three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was adorable in a really weird way. I mean, the Higginsons have to be used to this. They have all those boys living there. Hey, no! <laughs> Love it. This is by far the most people we've ever had. Oh, like the whole team. Food and drink. Where are we all going to sit down and eat it? Floor. Natural chair. You're in a rich neighborhood. How have you not run into a dentist yet? Oh, probably because most dentists aren't rich. I should know. I work for one. House that was Helen Corroy. My feet. I can't lose. Oh, it's Even an artist's feet? So <laughs> okay. Oh, we get a thousand pounds each. That's like oh, my Oh, it's a dentist, isn't it? Hold on. I've got to fix my knee. Oh. God. Uh. Oh, it wasn't his feet. It was his knee. Any new medications? Just my antihistamine. Oh, that'd do it. I got a new cat. She's allergic. Ah, oh, well, that's easy. Dry mouth. Phoebe. Antihistamines dry out the mouth, and when saliva production is reduced, then the environment for odor producing bacteria thrives. Indeed. Yo! Can I get an assy? Fine. Not with you, mate. With Keely. Oh. But Keely Jones was a seminal figure throughout my teenage years. How oh. about this? Why don't we all take a picture together? By the tree. Wicked. God, why does that kid pop up all the time and want an ussy? I'm so happy for you, Higgins. Oh, oh. oh. oh he's the surfboard. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Didn't it feel better to solve the problem than go beat up a little kid? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I might not go. Really? You're willing to miss a puppet show by Daniel Craig and Rachel Weisz? Because that sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, don't get me wrong. They are incredible. But all I really want to see those two do together is fuck. Yeah, oh. well, I get that. Yeah. You got any <laughs> other ideas? Let's we'll see. Oh, you want me to drive? The steering wheel's on this side. Right, I'm the one with the accent here. I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> it's Carol Singers. It's Bernard, and they're going to be mean to him with the cardboard, aren't they? But nothing will fix you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Phoebe. Aww. Cute. Ho, 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 Higginson. Nice. Oh. I could just. I want her singing in every episode from now on. I remember when you. <laughs> all the fun that we had last year. Oh, oh my gosh. Like, like, got tears in my eyes. Perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Wonderful Christmas episode. And next. Yeah. Look what one kiss can do. Are we gonna get a Nate story? Oh. Yeah, it's a poem. <laughs> Good afternoon. 
He has a crush on her. Oh, Nain. So, uh, this is my mum and dad's favourite restaurant, and Friday's their 35th wedding anniversary. Oh, I told that he had a crush Jane. on her. Doesn't. How Oops. do you know my name? Oh, I don't. That's what the 35th wedding anniversary is. Jade. Oh. I have to talk to Derek. Oh. I really thought he had a crush on her. Now I'm not sure. Richmond, they're like a woman behind the wheel. Completely lost. George, didn't you lose your license drink driving? That was an allergic reaction to my medication. Is that sure. the same medication that made you piss your pants? <laughs> I love Roy. <laughs> Hi. Good news. Oh. We can set aside the table in the corner for you. Why not the one in the window? I'm sorry, I can't guarantee a reservation for the window table. Why not? I know Roy Kent. Well, please let us know if Mr. Kent ever wants the window table. Ouch. Oh, neat. Yeah. It's a weird beginning. Normally we don't get a uh, beginning of episodes like that. They're going to like make me all happy about the Christmas episode and then break my heart with this one, huh? People saying there's something wrong with us. Not the way I see it. Okay, and here's why. I believe in communism. Took a weird turn. Rom communism, that is. Mm -hmm. Drew Barrymore. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Oh, Matthew McConaughey, obviously. All right, all right, yeah. The three Kates. Yeah. Beckinsale, Hudson, Winslow. Yeah. Oh, okay. I forgot Blanchett. I enjoy Renee Zellweger and all the Bridget Jones movies. Oh. And her accent is pitch perfect, and her gift for physical comedy is grossly underrated. Yeah. Hell yeah, absolutely. That's not Judy. No, you gotta give it up for Zellweger. I love this. <laughs> Jennifer Lopez. That's a great call, Danny, and not at all beat too late. <laughs> Our job is to have zero expectations and just let go. I hate the psychologist in the back of the room. Okay, let's watch the second half. Come on, go. What are you writing down? Wait a second. You play Sheffield Wednesday? Saturday. Oh, we're playing Sheffield Saturday. The club is called Sheffield Wednesday. We play them on Saturday. They are called <laughs> Sheffield Wednesday because they used to only play on Wednesdays, but nowadays they play on whatever day of the week they feel like, including but not limited to Saturdays, which again is the day of the week we will be playing them. This Saturday? I can't. I got plans. <laughs> oh, <come on. laughs> hey, Doc. Good afternoon. Coach Lasso, is Isaac okay? No, no ma'am. He is not. No, he's a wigwam in a teepee right now. What does that mean? He's too tense. Hey! <laughs> Isaac's our captain. Exactly. And I can't very well ask Isaac to pull himself aside, you know, because that'd be dangerous to close to messing with the, uh, what's it? The dark arts? No, no. Space time continuum? That's it, yeah. Uh -huh. Fact is, Isaac is a big dog, you know, so he's only going to respond to a big dog himself. Roy Kent. I'll do it. I. <laughs> I don't laugh at Nate. Did you just giggle? I don't know. Did I? Maybe. Hmm. Who are you texting? Sorry, it's just this mystery man that I've been talking to on banter has just quoted Rilke. Oh. Our deepest fears are like dragons guarding our deepest treasures. Maybe you're writing letters to a hung poet. Is that um, a joke from Sex and the City? No, but thank you. <laughs> They're actually just for the players. Oh, oh good. Oh, hate free coffee anyway, it always tastes so well. <laughs> Deliciously free. Poor Nate. Like Jamie needed a free Nespresso. I never look over anyone's shoulders to see what's on their screens. <laughs> I used to. Oh, just <laughs> the trauma. <laughs> wife. I'll ring her back later. Keeps it fresh. Oh. <laughs> it is so odd to imagine you young. Yeah, I get that a lot. I was the only kid in primary school with sciatica. <laughs> oh, even if he like unmatches with you, it's fine. You want to be with somebody who wants the same thing you do. I told you, either you take down my photo or you start giving me free kebabs. 750, mate. Fair enough. <laughs> no way. Fancy running into you here. 
After asking Keely where you were and scooped my boot right over, that is. <laughs> she told me to expect a mustachioed surprise that would anger me. I thought really? it was going to be Wario for my great aunt Natalie. <laughs> wow, don't make your aunt Natalie so great, but I appreciate your effusiveness despite her appearance. <laughs> Why are you bothering me in my kebab place? This is like my church. Oh, who knew transubstantiation could happen with the pita? <laughs> mm. What do you think about joining the coaching staff, Roy? Fuck off. Oh. Mm, that's a solid negotiation tactic right there. Why won't you let me be happy? <laughs> there you go, mate. Thank you. You know, you two remind me of me and my old man when I told him I was leaving medical school a week before graduation. I was really good at it. Bedside manner, reading charts, cutting up shit. Hmm. But it's just not what I was meant to do. What? I love making a donna kebab. Anyway. <laughs> let me finish my kebab and pray on it. <laughs> he is at church. <laughs> For the collection plate. Oh, come on, Roy. Now. No, <laughs> you're meant to be a coach. Go help your friend. Every time I walk into one of those meetings, they look at me like some schoolgirl with pigtails. Oh, you'd look well fit with pigtails. I do, but I have a secret. <laughs> I make myself big. I stand up on my tiptoes, put my arms in the air, and make myself as big as possible to feel my own power. I wish I was a little bit taller. I do the same thing now. I become a big personality. <laughs> Fuck, you're amazing. Let's invade France. <laughs> yeah, I'll just text them and let them know we're here. Oh! <laughs> I love it. Scared the crap out of myself one time with my phone underneath of me, it lit me from underneath, and I turned right into the mirror, fell to the floor. Then I laughed at myself for a solid minute. What about me? What do I get to do? Nothing. Oh, come on. Can I keep score? Fine. All right. I'm gonna use my fingers. It's zero, zero. Nil, nil. It is nil, nil. <laughs> right this way. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Come on, Nate. Come on, Nate. Come on, Nate. Um. You got this, baby. Come on. Come on, make your face. You're Come on. Them. Fucking Shelly. Oh, wow, oh, that's a bit much. And you are going to be stunned by how quickly a gaggle of Shelly's can get through a free course meal and get out of here. So what do you say? Okay. Oh. Mum, Dad, perhaps you'd like to give me a number as well. No, that's okay. <laughs> Sorry. That is dry. Oh, me too. I'm, I'm not a dog. Yeah, fair. Good job, Nate. Thank you. His father does seem hard to please, though. Oh, he looked right over his dad for approval. I brought you here to remind you that football is a fucking game. That you used to play as a fucking kid because it was fun. Go back out there and have some fucking fun. All right. Game on. You gotta remember why you loved it. Too many fucks? A little bit. I don't know. It's kind of like all the nipples in that movie Showgirls. By halfway through, you don't even notice anymore. You just kind of get sucked into the narrative. Ah. I dated Gene Gershon once. Of course you did. That makes me happy. <laughs> Roy came alive. You complete our team. You're an oh. asshole. I'm also just a coach standing in front of a boy. <laughs> Ask Listen, me. I'm never coming back to Richmond. Not now, not ever. 
Now fuck off. He was quoting rom-coms. Come on. As you wish. <laughs> He's coming back. We're going to get that Roy Kent back. Hey, you never finished your joke. Yeah, I want to know what this joke? joke. What does a British owl say? All right. Who? 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 Yeah. Worth the wait. Go back to that reaction because I said that. Hey, Nate, what does the British owl say? Oh, does the British owl say whom? I just kind of flubbed it just then. Because of me. <laughs> Take my heart and please don't break it in love. It's Was too personal. Whole play. Telling you I'm rich and that you fucking fit. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. No. Are you kidding me? I don't know. He's 17. He'll probably have chips for dinner and a wank before bed. Apologies for the language. Boy, <laughs> I was looking for some <laughs> insight. Of course we don't know. We're not in the locker rooms with them. We're not on the pitch with them. We can't look them in the eyes and encourage them to be better than they ever thought they were capable of being. That's right, coach. We just... We're just on the outside, looking in, judging them. Go be with your team, Roy. Go be with your team. <laughs> He's going to see McAdoo change. Oh, I love how they have banter on there. You did that, Roy. I'm getting like emotional. <laughs> <laughs> so I bet you don't miss the cold, eh, Roy? I miss all of it. Excuse me. What are you doing? I'm sorry, fellas. This isn't what I'm meant to do. I love this for you. So rom com, I love it. <laughs> that old Roy Kentney is not letting him run very fast. Oh, I knew it was going to be the knee issue. Oh, God, that was a rough call on my part. Sorry, Roy, I feel like I jinxed you. You see his new watch? You get him to Nelson right in 10 minutes, it's yours. Get him. Let's slap that knee in place. <laughs> Gotta get in there. Do you have a ticket? Can't let anyone in without a ticket. I'm Roy Kent. He does look like it. A little. Man him out. Oh, for fuck. <laughs> he kind of wore up here, right? <laughs> I believe you're holding a ticket for Raven McIntyre. <laughs> what a great callback. Enjoy the game. Fuck you. Who is you? Fuck. Yeah, I feel you. I, I have a hard time sitting here with my knees sometimes. Ooh, just popped. Aww. Everyone keeps telling me that they're married in real life, and I love it because they're so stinking cute together. Hello, coach. Really glad you decided. Shut up. <laughs> just shut up. <laughs> You had me a coach. <laughs> I love this episode so much. Oh, Nate, it's okay. Nate showed up with his tie, and then here's Roy on the sidelines wearing his tie. Oh, no. Okay, next episode. Let's not try to fuck this one up, right? Tart, edge of the area. He has options. Chooses Rojas. Oh! Nice. Jamie passed to Danny. I love it. Do you want a cup of tea? Yes, please. Oh. Is she talking to Ted? Put some clothes on. Mina the cleaner will be here any second. 
Oh, she's here. Mina. Mother. Oh. Hello, darling. Not the cleaner. I've left your father. Oh. Oh. A oh. the study. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> I swear she's talking to Ted on that app. I don't want there to be a romance between those two. As much as I love them, I don't want like that drama. Nothing I care to speak about at work. Oh. Doc, you are more mysterious than David Blaine reading a Sue Grafton novel at Area 51. <laughs> well, Ted, make an appointment when you need to talk. Hey, I talk all the time, Doc. Just let me follow you around for 10 minutes. After five, you want me to hush my butt. Ted, go talk to her. Tell you what, I am shipping the heck out of you two. <laughs> I'm calling the night job. Yeah, well, tell Mr. Puff and stuff I said hello. And that is a joke for people born in the early to mid-70s. Yep, I don't know what that means. Hey, Coach, what's up? I know that. Uh, Wanderer. Know. What the fuck's wrong with you? Yeah. Nothing. Jane and I got back together. I was wondering. Oh, oh, right, yes. oh, that's not. Do you really think that's a good idea? Oh, Higgins. I'd like to request an emergency meeting of the Diamond Dogs. Oh. Diamond Dogs, mount up! Hey, Roy, you want to sit in with us? No! <laughs> in my defense, I know why I didn't say anything. And why is that? Because you should never say anything. And look, man, I learned that the hard way. One of my best friends growing up, I told him so. And he was not too pleased. Uh. All right? And that is the last time I ever gave a best man speech. That's not the best time. Okay. I understand. So even though this is an unsanctioned <laughs> meeting because beer wasn't Poor here, Higgins. let's just go ahead and diamond dogs dismount. Rawr, 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 Stupid barking means it's over, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh wow! All right, chin up, lads. Come on, Colin, you don't. Hey, Colin. I am a strong and capable man. That's right. That's the Royal Kent effect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Nate. Anything for me, coach? All right, let's go again. Oh. You got to tell Roy he needs to start coaching me. Oh, wait, you want me to tell Roy Kent what to do? <laughs> yeah, he's going to love that. Yeah, I'll totally drop it into one of our many conversations where Roy talks to me about his life and asks for my advice. Phyllis <laughs> 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 Steins, I'm asking for help here. Just agree with everything that he throws at you. Really takes the anger wind out of his brat sails. Oh. Shall we? Yes, ma'am. I'd love to see just Jamie agreeing with everything that Roy says. I don't really know how to talk to you. Then it's working. <laughs> I love Coach Beard. I'm going to live my best life now for as long as I can until I die. Okay. Or until I'm murdered. Deborah, you don't have to go there. Jeez. And then I stood up, I flushed the toilet, I pulled up my trousers, and I walked straight out of there. <laughs> That's incredible. You should do a TED talk. No, oh. I agree. Yeah, because right now you're getting a whole heap of TED listen. <laughs> <laughs> Could you tell them to stop shouting at the football? What football? They're watching last night's Bake Off. Oh, look at that sponge! That's rubbish! Your I love that! Oh. I'm sorry, would you excuse me? This is my psychic. She said she'd call me exactly when I needed her. Oh, okay. That's incredible, isn't it? <laughs> what were you thinking? That if you ever left me again, I would throw myself off a cliff. Then I'd lay down at the bottom so you could land on me. Jane. Hey. Who's Finn? Oh, my old uni friend. Um, the underwear model. Mm -hmm. He wants to go through some shoot he did. I'll see you later. Bye. That's weird. <laughs> Higgins with his gagging is so fantastic. It's true. I do play in quite a dull and conformist way. And you're ugly. 
Oh. Say it. I am. Huh? I am an ugly, ugly boy. With bad hair. hair. Maybe could be. With with bad hair, fine. Cheers. I enjoyed that. <laughs> you fucking <laughs> asshole! Yeah. I'm trying to build bridges here. You couldn't fucking build Jeff Bridges. Hey, hey, hey. That doesn't make any sense. Fine. I'll tell you what's wrong with you. All right, now, here we go. You oh. fucked him up. Whoa. You've got him to pass and shit, and in doing okay. so, you've made him average. Because, Jamie, you are a prick. So just be a prick. I'm saying sometimes, when it is appropriate, yes, be a prick. Good job. OK. I will then I'll win. I'm actually curious about that myself, too. I'll give you a signal. Hmm. What signal? Any specifics we need to look out for? You'll know <laughs> when you see it. <laughs> While you're trying, Jamie, it's so good. Oh, I swear, if we actually win this match, I will burn this pub to the ground. Easy, maze right there. I will knock over a chair. <laughs> I will channel my raging enthusiasm into ways to help my community. There you go. <laughs> oh, another oh. way would pass. And the baffling lack of aggression from Tart continues. Give the sing signal. Give the I'm signal. It's time for the signal. Yep. Yeah, okay. Jamie! <laughs> well, you don't see that very often, Chris, especially in perfect unison. We apologize for the fruity sign language. Seems like that's us really settled into our culture. <laughs> he still tried to hide it, though. You're gonna foul me, and I'm gonna score all the way from back here. <laughs> it's off the top. Oh, there we go. You don't need it. The little prick's gonna fucking score from there. No way. Let's go, Jamie. That's too far. Probably not. <laughs> Coach Beard. <laughs> Does no good. I think if you care about someone, you have to keep trying. Maybe one day you'll get through. Yep. You guys talking about Beard and Jane? She once followed me all the way home just to ask if Beard was shagging Ted. Wow. Okay. Didn't expect that. Jane's nuts. You okay, Ted? Head. Oh, God. You better not, Jamie. Coach, you okay? Oh, yeah, no, I'm, I gotta go. My stomach. I hope the therapist saw that. We gotta be aggressive here, right? I think we need. Oh. Reynolds! Come on, Nate. Winchester! Baba Twende! You're going in! Oh, we need to go! Park the goddamn bus! Go! Park the bus! Park the bus! I don't know what any of this means other than it's a trick play. What's going on? I got this. Looks like the coaching staff are panicking, Arlo. This is what a fish pie can do to a team. <laughs> it's good to see the Roy Kent effect is all alive and well. Nothing to do with me, that is all night. I'm happy for Nate. Well, I just do what had to be done. It's not like I'm some kind of wonder kid. Some kind of what? Wonder kid. Kid wonder. I think you mean wonder kind, yeah? 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I got it wrong too. Look, let me ask you one question. You're a great man. Does Jane make you greater? Mm. Okay, look, I, I, I apologize. Oh. I hear you. I get it. We will never speak of this again. No, no. <laughs> We're taking. Ah! <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, I miss that scared face. <laughs> oh, try this. Mm -mm. Oh, night. Great fucking work today. Thanks, Molly. Mm. <laughs> Little famous. You can probably get that table now easily. Hey, Ted, it's me. I was a bit worried about you today. I hope you're okay. It's just I'm on my way home for a very difficult conversation with my mother and I could really do with one of your pep talks. Mm. Anyway, take care. It'd be great if he was already there with Deborah. Mom? Darling, sorry to miss you. Your father apologized mm. and bought me a new Tesla. Well, hmm. Yeah. Jump man, jump man, jump man, and boy, got something. Ooh. Oh. It's Sam. Away, oh, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Okay, good. Well, good, you're great. Didn't see that coming. Where are you at, Ted? Oh. Ted, you scared me. <laughs> are you okay? I want to make an appointment. Oh, I don't want to wait for the next episode, but I have to. Mostly because I would feel bad having Xander edit four in a row. <laughs> so uh, it, it sucks that like we have to end on this set of reactions uh, with Ted not going to therapy yet, um, but desperately needing it. Um, I'm, I'm happy we started out with the Christmas episode. It was very lighthearted. It was lovely. And we're we're getting uh, well-rounded characters, not only with Roy, like seeing him with Keely and with Phoebe and kind of like <laughs> getting that that whole situation taken care of because he's Roy Kent. So he always figures things out and he always fixes it. Um, but then also him coming back to the team and coaching because that's really what's in his heart. Ted is so good at finding that out about people and exploiting that and bringing out kind of their passions, their love, what makes them tick. I love Ted. I really do. But the other person that like, you know, I from like the first episode almost that like I have absolutely loved and adored and I'm so glad we're seeing more of him is Higgins and him having all the players at his house and and him, you know, like just embracing all of them as family. And knowing where every single one of them was from, like that meant something to them. It means something to me. Um, and seeing him and his wife and how much they love each other. And 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 I know that they're uh, married in real life. And I think that that's fantastic because they have great chemistry. I love and adore Higgins. But even him wanting to help Coach Beard, even though everyone's saying like, no, stay out of it, stay out of it. And I feel like a good friend says something, even if it sacrifices part of the friendship, because most of the time when somebody reacts negatively about something like that, they know deep down that it's true. They just don't want to face it yet. And and I think uh, Higgins uh, kind of marching forward and doing it, even though everyone told him not to, I think that that makes him a fantastic friend to Coach Beard. I love having Roy back coaching the team. I do think that there's an issue going on with Nate. I, I don't quite know what's happening with him. At the beginning of the season, he was really agitated so much with Will. And then we saw him not have a whole lot of confidence um, in this one. And that made me sad, um, mostly because the times that he has some confidence, he's been fantastic. Um, but him actually, you know, like kind of being like, I'm going to run this play and he runs the play and it's because of him that they won the game, uh, I think is phenomenal. I love that for Nate. But, you know, him wanting to kind of be famous and 
um, not, I don't know if it's necessarily that it's that he wants to be famous. He doesn't want to be a nobody. And I think he feels like he's a nobody. But I, I do kind of see his character kind of uh, maybe getting obsessed with what they say about him on Twitter, what they said about him on live TV. Um, people giving him kudos at the pub was nice. So at least they're not calling him a wanker. So, I mean, he's got that going for him, which is nice. They did say that he thought he was a lemon or something. <laughs> I thought Rebecca was talking to Ted on, uh, uh, I've already forgot the name of the dating app, but uh, the fact that she's talking to Sam and they had kind of like flirtations somewhat in season one. And then even with her goddaughter in uh, the beginning of the season and that that's who he's talking to. I would love if they got together. I don't think that that's um, ethical for the team to um, a player to be sleeping or in a relationship with the owner. I think that there's there's a lot of problems that can come from that. Um, but uh, it, it seems that she has somebody that that uh, she can go to for release. But then there's somebody that like makes her happy. And um, I, I wonder I wonder what it would be like for her and Sam to actually go out on a date. Because I adore Sam. I love Sam. The whole team, we got like, you know, a little bit from Isaac and, and Roy helping Isaac find his, you know, like uh, inner child again and why he had a love for the game. Uh, that episode in particular, like everything coming back to romantic comedies was just phenomenal, phenomenal writing in that episode. I can't even tell you, like, just everything that I kept picking up on. I absolutely love. And there was some stuff that I had no idea what they were even talking about, but the the, the stuff that I did pick up on loved loved and especially the introduction of the therapist and then like colin like being a man of confidence um uh, and, and how everybody is benefiting from you know talking about the, those problems and releasing it i think is fantastic and i'm excited for ted to experience that i'm that's what's great is that he they, they could make him a caricature of like the happy guy where he's always positive and he's always, you know, saying like goofy things or silly things or super positive things. And it's always with a smile with a southern accent. It's just, I'm delightful. Um, but they make him well-rounded in the fact that like he's struggling. He's having a hard time, whether it's Christmas time and not being with his his son, uh, with his family, you know, live <laughs> and in, in, in person, you know, to obviously, you know, having panic attacks and not dealing with the issues he's he's really good at trying to be positive to push through it but the big things you still have to talk about you still have to get it out you have to release it somehow and and you know saying tedisms and you know bringing cheer to people's lives isn't really the thing that's going to cut it especially with the drinking there always seems to be like a, a lot of drinking when it comes to ted that he relies on that a lot and uh that's unfortunate you know, and it's because he's not talking about stuff that he has to rely on a substance. I am thoroughly loving Jamie this season, but in the past couple episodes to where, you know, like he wasn't being Jamie. He was being very different. And I, I was actually like happy to see him celebrating with the team. And it was so great. But then seeing like the Jamie come out and being the heel and utilizing him like like that's the player you want on your team. Right. He's like the Draymond Green of like soccer, right? You you want that guy that like, you know, talks shit to all the other players and is physical and and imposing, but like as long as he's on your team and he's doing it to other people, that's fantastic. <laughs> that's fantastic. You don't want him doing it against you. As we've seen, he uh, uh, definitely did something for Man City against Richmond at the end of last season. So you want Jamie Tart on your team being Jamie Tart doing Jamie Tart things. Jamie Tart do 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 do. Jamie Tart do 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 do. I'm so happy I get to sing that again. <laughs> But guys, if you want to watch the full-length reaction to these episodes, they will be available on my Patreon. But in the meantime, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Just how were you enjoying this season? Like, the Christmas episode, right? That's a standout episode. Not only with the intro, but, like, the singing at the end. Like, all the players being together. Uh, you gotta focus on the Higginsons, who I just love. Uh, but I, 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 I love the rom-com episode. And then this last one with kind of... Uh, Seeing Ted, like ready to just kind of snap and, and and people not interfering with other people's lives. Um, I feel like I feel like someone needs to interfere with Ted's life. And 
you know, Rebecca getting up and going and look for Ted, like she needs to interfere in Ted's life. She needs to. She needs to. She needs to. She needs to make sure he's okay. Because I want him to be okay. I I don't mind uh, a broken Ted Lasso. I think we all have those moments. But uh, uh, the panic attacks. If you've ever had a panic attack, it's the worst feeling you've ever had in your life. You think you are going to die. Um, and now we've seen him have two. And that's destructive. Not only uh, mentally, but like physically. So we need we need our Ted to not have panic attacks. He can still have problems that he's got to work through, but the panic attacks, we have to help him stop having those because it's hard on me. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm really looking forward to the next couple episodes. I think there is uh, 12 episodes in this season, so uh, that makes it nice where it's three, 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 three. Three, three, yeah, four, four times, four times, four sets. All right, guys. <laughs> I'm feeling saucy. I think I'm, I think I'm going to have a glass of rosé. Not with Roy Kent and not doing yoga with 60-year-old women. But it sounds like fun. <laughs> okay, guys. I'll see. The missing Christmas mustache. What do they say? Mustache. I love watching Christmas stuff in May. It just puts me in a good Merry mood. Merry Christmas, everyone. Oh, hey, Nate. One of my presents to Kaylee is that I'd stop by and say, Merry Christmas to you. It's a Merry Christmas. Now, jingle my bells. It's Roy Kemp. What's the matter? Mm. I got something on my face. No, Ted, that's the problem. There's nothing on your face. Your mustache is gone. That's his signature look. <laughs> oh, I love them. Although I did notice when I saw a picture that Jamie's missing his little eyebrow notches. Here you go, coach. I've always Now he's got it. Oh, no. I'm supposed to FaceTime with Henry in an hour. He won't recognize me without my mustache. Mm -hmm. It's going to ruin Christmas. Don't worry, Ted. Everyone, split up and find that snot mop. Snot mop. <laughs> they have to find his mustache? Oh, I hope they find it. I really want this Christmas to be perfect. Oh. See, like Mr. Potato Head? You just pop it off. It weren't in Ted's car. But I don't have a car, Jamie. Then it wasn't in the person's car whose window I just smashed with a rock. <laughs> People, <laughs> we don't need to find Ted's moustache. We need to catch it. What? I built the trap and baited it with the moustache's favourite things. Crumbs, a small comb, and a tiny bit of pomade. <laughs> Before we kill anything, let me try something. Keely always has the answer. Oh, little more up there. And a little oh, bit I don't know what this is. The answer. And presto! No. Oh, I love it. Looks more like Clark Gable or John Waters. Hello, me. John Waters, definitely. Why do you have a disguise kit? Coach Why Bear? don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who's her? Oi, you need a tash? Yeah. Yeah, just take an eyebrow. I was thinking that. Whoa. I look like Detroit Tigers superfan Magnum P.I. <laughs> but even though this feels like I'm kissing your forehead, it ain't me, Roy. <laughs> oh, babe, I'm going to miss your eyebrows. Hang on. <laughs> You're so hairy. Disgusting. <laughs> but I realize not having my mustache, it ain't the end of the world. Because mm -mm. it's not about making Christmas perfect for the people you love. It's the people you love that make Christmas perfect. It came back. Hey, everyone. Have a perfect Christmas. I mean, an imperfect Christmas. Because it's the imperfections that make it... Well, I mean, you get it. You saw what we're going for, right? Yep. Sure uh -oh. did. Is it snowing in my apartment? Oh, that's weird. Oh, I love that. 